Greetings guys. Today we're going to talk about the quadratic formula. Okay, so hopefully you've just seen or recently seen either my video or some other video or some lecture on completing the square. Completing the square is the one of the other methods that we use to solve quadratic equations instead of factoring. Well, completing the square is awesome as far as efficiency. It always works. You can always find a solution to a quadratic equation, even at the expense of our number system, because some of the answers even come out complex and imaginary, right? Okay. However, completing the square can be a more lengthy process than factoring, which is what makes it less desirable. So with this method right here, we're actually going to take best of both worlds. Something that is efficient always gives an answer and can be very, very shortened. And, uh, and you can even have quick assistance if you happen to be using a calculator too. Okay, so here's the quadratic formula. Where does it come from? Uh, if, if you look it up, there's you know probably thousands of people always talking about the proof of it and things like that. Let me just break it down in one simple idea. If you take a quadratic that is written with letters instead of numbers, the AX squared, the BX, and the C, where A, B, and C are typically numbers, but for the proof, you know, you use letters. <clears throat> Basically, you would be completing the square and then solving for X, the method that we just got through talking about if you're watching my series, right? Okay, but you're doing it to these generic pieces with letters. So what happens is you end up with this nice, lovely formula where X is solved for. In other words, this is the solution set. All you need to do is plug in the values that come from your quadratic then, and that's why we call it the quadratic formula. It's basically a generic structure for, hey, solve that quadratic. So not only is it efficient because completing the square always works, right? When it's done correctly, you can always find a solution. But also, it's just a formula. You can go straight from question directly to answer. Love a method like that, right? Okay, so the only other caveat is you got to memorize the formula, right? Negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, right? Depending on who your instructor is and who, where your history is from, the, you can have anything from my teacher made me write the proof 10 million times in red ink all the way to my teacher made me sing Pop Goes the Weasel, right? There, there's all different versions that I've heard. The Pop version, uh, the Pop... Uh, goes the weasel version is negative b plus and minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? Whatever helps you the most. You need to know this formula. Most of the time it's not given on any tests, okay? You have to know the quadratic formula to use it. So let's go through uh, an example. 2x squared plus 9x plus 10 equals 0. Okay, well, it is actually factorable, right? Because 2 times 10 is 20, and there are two numbers that multiply to 20, which also add to 9. So I could actually go through the factoring version of solving this, which could be pretty quick, right? But here's the thing. Factoring is like a game, especially if you play it all the time and you just get used to the number games of it. If you don't see that factoring right away, though, usually it's going to take longer for you to factor than plugging it into this formula because the formula is always the same, right? No, no number games or anything like that, okay? If you like factoring, then go for it. If you don't see the factoring right away, the formula is going to be faster, especially if you've practiced it, okay? So let's practice that formula. My A is two here, my B is nine, and my C is positive 10 there, okay? Keep that in mind. You've got to have the equal zero to have the original structure made for this formula. You've got to have it. Okay, so now I've got my, my thing set up. Let's just plug it into the formula. X equals. This is the last time I'm going to write X in this string. Do not put any X's in the formula. It's all numbers, A, B, and C. Negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4a and c. 
then divided by 2 times a. Be sure that your division symbol goes all the way across the whole thing, okay? Don't, don't fall short and maybe not let the front piece hit it and stuff. Be careful with all that. It has to go underneath everything. All right, now we just simplify. x equals negative 9 plus or minus square root of, that's 81, minus 80. And then 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4. I can actually do the square root of 1. Good news, right? Sometimes when you're doing these things, you will be able to do the square root, and other times you won't. You'll just be able to, to simplify it, or maybe you won't be able to do any of it at all. There are some of these uh, formulas, uh, setups, where this is like where you stop because you can't do anything else with that radical. In this case, I can. If you can do the whole radical like that, you should write out both answers separately because you can now actually work out the whole thing, okay? Also, if you can work out the whole radical, if, if it turns out to be a nice number like that, that means the original thing was factorable too, by the way. Okay, so from here, we split it. Because I could do the radical, I split it. Negative nine plus one over four is negative eight over four, which is negative two. And negative nine minus one over four, which is negative 10 over four, which is negative five halves. So I actually have x equals negative two and x equals negative five halves. I have my two solutions to the original quadratic equation at this point, okay? Next two examples, just straightforward, set them up, knock them down with this formula, right? I can tell they're quadratic, and that's key. You see the squares, right? So I know I'm using quadratic formula. All right, so what's the one thing that's wrong with this? I don't have the equal zero. And remember, that was important to the structure. It has to be set up the same way that the formula is designed for, okay? So I'm going to start by subtracting one from both sides here. 2x squared minus 6x minus one equals zero. All right, now my a is two, right? Here's my a. My b, be careful, my b is negative six. And my c is negative one. Okay, so let's do the formula x equals negative b, so that's negative, negative 6, plus or minus square root b squared. So all of the negative 6s squared. Do not square just the 6 and leave the negative. You always square all of b. So it will be positive 36 at that juncture. Minus 4 times a times c, c is negative 1 and then two times a. So negative, negative six, let's simplify. That's gonna be 36. Plus, be careful here, double negative, four times two times one is eight, all over four. All right. So 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 8 is 44 over 4. Okay, I can't do the square root of all of the 44. However, I can simplify it a little bit, right? So you should if you can. The square root of 44 is square root of 4 times square root of 11 which is two square root of 11. So that's what I'm gonna be putting here, is the two square root of 11. Okay, so x equals six plus or minus 
2 square root of 11 over 4. Now right here I can do one more simplification. You have to be careful. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But I'm noticing that I can factor a, a one value out of all three pieces. Not the radical, out of the coefficients here. 6, 2, and 4, they all have a 2. Right? 6 over 4 would reduce, so would 2 over 4. So technically what I'm doing is a fraction reduction here. Right? 6 fourths would reduce to 3 halves. And 2 fourths would be 1 half. So I've just got square root of 11 with an understood 1 there, right? 1 half. So basically I just reduced both fractions. And now I've got the solution set to my equation here. 3 plus square root of 11 over 2 and 3 minus square root of 11 over 2. Okay? <clears throat> Same idea with this one. I have a quadratic. It's not in the correct form yet. And there's a couple of different ways you could approach this. For me, first off, I noticed that I would really like my x squared to be positive. It really helps if your a in your formula is positive so you don't have negatives to worry about later on. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4x squared and I'm going to add 4. I'm going to get everything to the left side here. I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides and I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Don't forget to write it in the proper format though, right? 4x squared would go first, then plus 2x, then plus 4. Here's another little side note. Here's something that you don't have to do, but it can really save you later on as far as time crunch goes. I'm noticing that the 4, the 2, and the 4 have a GCF. They all have a factor of 2 in them. Okay, So it's completely okay at this point to divide that out. If I divide by 2 everywhere here, that's completely okay to do because it's not going to change the fact that I'll still have an equal 0. Okay, So what will that change this to? I'll have 2x squared plus 1x plus 2 equals 0. Now, not as big of a difference here, but if they were big numbers and you just divided them to much smaller numbers, that really could make a huge difference in your solving process as far as saving time. Okay, But if you don't notice that right away, it's okay. You'll still get the same answer. It'll just have more reducing to do later on. Okay. But I noticed it, and we divided it out. It's perfectly legal because I did it to both sides of my equation. Now I have a quadratic in the correct format waiting to be formulated. Right? So here we go. My a is 2. My b is 1. My c is positive 2. So x equals negative 1, right, negative b, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? So the first thing I'm noticing is that I'm about to get a negative underneath this radical, which is important because that's going to give you imaginary values, right? Right here, that's going to be square root of 1 minus 16, negative 15 over 4. So for the most part at this point, all it is, is going to be is just simplifying these radicals and possibly any fractions as much as possible, right? The only thing I can do here, 15 is 5 times 3, I can't do anything with the square roots of those, but I can make this more proper uh, notation. Since it is the square root of a negative, it is imaginary. So I'll write that officially like this. Negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 15 over 4. And that's as low as you can reduce the solution for this one. It is a complex set, right? Complex meaning it has real and imaginary portions to each uh, solution. 
negative 1 plus i squared of 15 over 4, negative 1 minus i squared of 15 over 4. And also, if you were actually looking at the complex you know, numbers here, the real part would be the negative 1 over 4, and the imaginary part is square root of 15 over 4. One more example of quadratic formula. Um, something with fractions in it, right? Always love those, I know you do. Well, it's okay, right? I showed you an example just a minute ago of how we can divide when things have a GCF as long as you, you know, follow the rules of algebra. The same thing goes with fractions. If you don't like using the fractions or you don't want to use decimals either way, you can actually get rid of them because it's still an equation. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides equally. Well, to get rid of fractions, all I need to do is multiply by something. In this case, I need the something I multiply to be able to reduce with a 6 and a 2 at the same time, right? Common denominator there would be 6. So that's what I'm going to multiply by. I'm going to do times 6 here, 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 and here. I'm going to multiply that 6 to both sides equally and distribute it out. All right, well, 6 divided by 6 is 1, so that leaves me with x squared. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so minus 3x. And 6 times 1, that's still 6, right? I went to the meeting. They didn't change it, I promise. Anything times 0 is 0. So lo and behold, I still have a quadratic equal to 0. It's in the perfect format that we need for the quadratic formula. Right? Whether it's factorable or not, whether you see the factorization or not, the formula will always give you a solution. So let's do that. My a is 1, right? My b is negative 3. And my c is negative 6. Okay? So x equals negative b is negative 3 plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 6, all divided by 2a. All right, so let's simplify. x equals negative negative 3 is 3 plus or minus square root of, I've got 9 plus, double negative there, 24 all over 2. Okay, so then I have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 33 all over 2. Okay, well, 33 is 3 times 11. So I can't simplify that square root any more than it already is. And I don't have any factor that can come out of both the left and right sides there. So this is actually where you would stop. And depending on the instructions, you can either get the decimal versions or leave it like it is. Again, don't forget, there are two solutions there. 3 plus square root of 33 over 2, 3 minus square root of 33 over 2. Okay. All right, so I hope this helps you in all of your solving quadratic endeavors.